Hello dear student, this is Dr. Sayar from Delta West, your best online mentor for the preparation of INBD aid at the NFK exam. Please like and subscribe to my channel on YouTube and follow me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok and LinkedIn. Please do visit my website at dentabest.com where you can see different programs, both personalized and self-study smart learning programs offered by me at a very affordable cost for all my hardworking dear students. So the topic we are going to take today in this video is nitrous sedation for the pediatric patients. So first of all, we should try to understand what is the difference between adults and children when it comes to nitrous administration. So in children, the metabolic rate is higher as compared to adults. Children have higher respiratory rate, children have higher heart rate, high risk of desaturation in them because they have less capacity in their lungs and higher risk of airway obstruction too because they have large tongue and they have tonsils. Only thing which is lower in children is the blood pressure. Now let us try to understand what is conscious sedation. So conscious sedation is given by nitrous oxide. So nitrous oxide is a very safe drug that is used for pediatric patient. The patients who are apprehensive, anxious, you can use conscious sedation. So let us talk about the conscious sedation now. So conscious sedation is very popular method of sedating the pediatric patient who are fearful, apprehensive, anxious. This conscious sedation is not going to make the child completely unconscious. It is only going to minimally depress level of consciousness. That's how it is different from general anesthesia. In general anesthesia, the patient is going to be completely unconscious. The second thing is that in conscious sedation, the patient is maintaining his own ability of breathing. While in general, we know that patient no longer maintain the ability for it. Now, when we talk about the reflexes in conscious sedation, patient is still maintaining his own reflexes. But we know in general anesthesia, all the reflexes are lost. Now, inhalation route is the most frequently utilized route you have for the sedation in pediatric dentistry. So, the nitrous oxide sedation not only helps you with reducing the fear, apprehension and anxiety in the children, it also raises your pain threshold. You can see here, raising the pain threshold. As well as, it is also going to reduce the fatigue. Now, there is something called as MAC, that is, minimum alveolar concentration. So this is the concentration that is required to make 50% of the patient immobile. So when you have the general anesthesia gases like halothane and fluorine, they are very potent general anesthetic. You just require maybe 2% or maybe 4% to make the patient completely unconscious. But in case of nitrous oxide, the MAC value, MAC is very high. It is 105%. That means you need this much of concentration of nitrous to make 50% of patient immobile but we never give this much of nitrous to the patient because in pediatric patient what you can do you can go 30 70 that means 30% nitrous 70% oxygen or you go 40 60 maximum you can go 50 50 in pediatric patient when it comes to nitrous and oxygen even in adults you go 60 40 70 30 or maximum 80 20 at any point, you cannot give more than 80% nitrous to the patient or less than 20% oxygen. So that means clinically, we can never have 105% of nitrous to be administered to the patient. And that's the reason we can never make patient unconscious from the nitrous. So the nitrous sedation, so when we talk about the general anesthesia later on in we will discuss about it, go through four stages. But the nitrous sedation is only limited to stage 1. It doesn't go through stage 2, 3 or 4. So in stage 1, you can see the paresthesia in the patient, warm sensation, drifting. And dream-like stage can start when the patient is getting saturated with nitrous. So if you see the child has become sleepy, that means you should stop giving the nitrous. So the first symptom the patient feels with the nitrous oxide sedation is the tingling of the extremities of the hands and feet. 
Now, how you prepare a pediatric patient with the nitrous is to place the patient in the reclined position. Telcho do is very uh, successful behavior management technique that we have for the patients. Where you're telling the procedure, showing and then actually performing it. Let him know what are the sensations that are going to happen in advance. So it is not something new for him. Total flow rate for the nitrous administration is 4 to 6 liters per minute for most of the children. And you increase it in 10% increment until you reach your maintenance dose. Now the most common complication that we can have from nitrous oxide sedation is nausea and vomiting. So if the child looks sleepy to you, you have to constantly remind him to keep the mouth open. He is getting agitated, sore, sweating, nausea, getting unconscious, not responding to your questions. Because that's the main thing of conscious sedation. The patient is still responding to your verbal command. So these are all the signs of saturation. Now, once you are done with the nitrous procedure, it's very important for you to give 100% oxygen for 5 minutes at the end of the procedure. Why this 100% oxygen is very important? To prevent diffusion hypoxia. So when the procedure is ended, the nitrous is trying to leave your lungs. There is a large outpouring of the nitrous. At that point, it can dilute the oxygen which is present there. And that is called as diffusion hypoxia. So when you give 100% oxygen to the patient for 5 minutes, that 100% oxygen will quickly replace the nitrous from the lungs. It will prevent the diffusion hypoxia. That is all for today. Thank you so much for watching my video.